since we are talking about film as storytelling, it makes sense to zero in on what it could mean actually to tell a story. When it comes to trying to figure out what it actually means to tell a story, I usually ask for help from great master, Krzysztof Kieślowski. And I usually take the beginning of his movie Blue and watch uh, the first scene with the students, which I invite you to watch on your own because of copyright issues. The scene is um, around three to four minutes long. And it's built from very distinct shots, which later in the analysis become the elements out of which we try to figure out the real meaning of the scene. And then I ask a question. What have we seen? And more often than not, almost 99%, they tell me it's an accident story, family travels in a car, and the car runs into the tree, and it's bad. So I ask them to watch the scene again, and I ask again, what is it that they have seen? Okay, so they say, well, maybe there is some modicum of uh, danger and uh, sadness. And slowly, step by step, taking each shot as it appears, we try to figure out what exactly lies behind every directorial and cinematographic decision uh, in the scene. We count the shots. The first shot is from underneath the car, ominous, dark wheel with uh, not very friendly noises of the car. The second shot, flipping piece of foil that is being let go. The third shot, a face of a girl looking somewhere behind her, ahead. She sees a tunnel of moving lights in a very distorted fashion. Then we go back to the girl again, just to make sure that we feel what she has seen. Then we see the car that stops and the, the people in the car get outside and the girl returns and as the girl returns we see that she is returning actually through the dropping oil so what is being told in the story oh well maybe that something bad will happen okay that's not bad when exactly do we know that something bad will happen and what exactly is this bad that is going to happen? So slowly and surely, after a few more screenings of the scene, people come to uh, understand that actually in this scene, what is being told is not the family is traveling in the car and there is an accident. No. What is being told, that's my uh, thesis, is that they are marked. There is something bad looming over them, ontologically speaking. The girl already knows, intuits, that something bad will happen. The tire from underneath the car black with uh, ominous sounds is an indication that it ain't gonna be romantic comedy. The next shot, a foil being let go. What is being let go? 
it's a symbolic thinking. Underneath our level of uh, rational uh, absorption of what's going on, but nevertheless it sticks. Something is being let go, like a bird, like a soul. Then when the girl is looking sadly behind in the tunnel, the lights in the tunnel, passing lights in the tunnel, Aren't we all taught by now, by mass culture, that um, when things happen to us at the very end of our road, there is a tunnel and there are lights there. So maybe this is something that is uh, premonitioning to her uh, that she is already there, almost. Uh, otherwise, why would they make this uh, specific camera special effect with this strange moving lights distorted. When the drops of oil are in line with the girl returning from being in the forest to the car, it's clear. If one wants to show visually that Pers that certain object, certain action will have a direct influence over this particular character, that would be the way to do it. The drops go over the girl. She is marked. Because of those drops, something will happen to her. And we know what happens to her. So the first chain of the shots in this um, beginning of the film it's not about uh, family traveling in the car and accident happening. It's about them being already in the state where the course of events has been set. And we are telling the event, which is not an accident. We are saying that we are all condemned. So the nasty question that sometimes I ask is, at one point, we know that the girl will not make it. And some say that um, after going through the very obvious shot that uh, the drop of leaking oil hits the girl and then going back through the tunnel last passage in the tunnel with the light at the end of it or on the sides that actually when the um, the foil goes uh, out that's already indication that uh, the soul will leave the body what's the conclusion we should know what is it that we are describing why do we put the camera where we put the camera so it's all uh, preceded by a very careful uh, intellectual analysis, or intellectual or emotional, depends how people work. Kieszowski is a master of those kinds of things. Um, whenever I am asked what to read, I say, read this book, autobiography that is being um, written down by his um, friend. And it's, it's a wonderful book that actually gives tremendous insight into uh, his thinking. The way he and Piesiewicz were approaching the story was always that they started with an idea. They start with an idea and only after they formulate the idea, the thesis, the problem that interests them, then, only then, they come up with the characters, the environment, and what happens to them. So, in other words, um, the thought abstract is first, and then it trickles down into the more and more specific narrative. Now, that's amazing. 
and uh, that's what Kubrick uh, mentioned in his uh, preface to the, to the Decalogue that we quoted earlier at the very beginning. I've been uh, in a very, very off, 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 not even Hollywood, but Los Angeles kind of environment for a long, long time. But nevertheless, uh, I did uh, run into a few powerful and famous people and somewhat for brief moments was able to connect with them. But only twice in my life I uh, experienced an uh, amazing mm, stare coming from those kinds of people. And one of those encounters was uh, a few seconds long, um, non-verbal, for me encounter, for him nothing. Uh, a store encounter with Krzysztof Kieślowski. I remember to this day that I entered uh, a computer store uh, in Warsaw and then he was there, there was nobody else, and because I opened the door and this store was very small, he instinctively turned around and looked who is coming. And that's all it took. And the stare in which he uh, looked at me just another person coming to the store and you want to see what's going on, right? Was of such a caliber, of such intensity, of such penetration that um, I remember that stare to this day. <laughs>